Welcome to the Kennedy Wrestling uh, Duels today. Uh, we are here with a tri, a tri meet, three meets. Well, uh, right now we are right in the middle of the Bloomington Kennedy Eagles versus the Orno Spartans. And uh, the first four weights were forfeited. They were forfeited to uh, Kennedy Wrestling, so we went up 24. And then at, so that was weights 106, 113, 120, and 126. At 132, we had Jalen Robbs wrestle for Kennedy, and he took on, if I recall, uh, Mason Ponkonen from uh, the Spartans, and he was pinned. Uh, then we went on to Vinny, Vincent Gore, Shield, at 138 for the Kennedy Eagles, and Orno High School throughout there. I do believe it was uh, Blake Ament. It may have been a JV or Stevenson because he didn't have a match. But uh, I know JV is on the other side. You may see it. They're done. They just had one JV match. At least the kid got one. Um, right now we are featuring, which brings us to our 145-pound match. And uh, we have Alex Alvera from uh, Kennedy versus uh, Eli McCown. And as you can just see, he got put on his match back for the second time in the second period. A minute 19 to go, and he got in. But uh, just keep in mind, Kennedy's very young. So is Orono. Orono went to state last year. Um, so they're reloading. We're reloading. Um, so uh, COVID has uh, taken its toll a little bit. But hey, we're here. We're having fun. There's opportunities, and actually, both these teams have improved. Um, we'll take what we can get to keep the season going. Right now, we're at 152. Leighton Gabler, senior. It's also senior night and parent night for Kennedy, by the way, and we'll celebrate that later. But uh, Leighton Gabler at 152 for the Kennedy Eagles, and Golden Eagles, that is. And we have, I do believe, Matt John for uh, Orno Spartans. Right now we have the score at 24 to 18, so uh, you can see Orno is uh, mounting a comeback. After we went up, the Eagles went up 24 to 0. They came, responded with uh, three straight pins. That's the way it is with young teams. You, you want to see them attempt things. We just got it up. Ooh, just dropped on a headlock. Nice lateral. And uh, they're making the adjustment here. Leighton Gaylor did a good job. He wants to scoop his head underneath. Keep the arm under control for headlock. Spread out your legs and adjust. Pick the head up and adjust your weight leaning back. But as you can see, things can happen. So we got two for a near fall. Because he probably only got two because the kid was uh, not quite 95 degrees or over 90 degrees until the end. So we got a minute three left in the period. Team score is 24-18. We're at the 152 weight pound. And we have the Eagles, Leighton Gablers, up four to two. Now it is four to four. Leighton just got go. taken down. Like Looks hands. like he's going for a cradle. And if he leans back, oh, uh, Leighton did a good job busting uh, the arms out underneath and uh, regaining. And he's going to try to get his back, escape up and out or a reversal. See a lot of arm action. Right? That's what you want to see. That's what you want. You want to feel. You don't want the person, the rest on the bottom, just to lay there. They have to show effort. And the person on top has to show effort. Uh, if they don't, you might get a stall warning, and then after that, if they do it again, you get a second stall warning, which is one point. Looks like he's got late night in a little trouble. He's got the arm in the back. He's going to fight that. Oh, you can see he tried to bring it over. But he's fighting. It's a good match for these two. I just saw a score correction. Uh, Gabler is up six to nothing. We got a timeout of the first period. I'm going to take a moment here and answer a call. Hey, Todd, uh, I'm on BET right now. You're going to have to text me. Sorry about that. Today's communication, at least we have it. Start of the second period. Leighton is on top, and I'm assuming either deferred or Orno Wrestler took the bottom. Usually, if you're behind, you want to choose down so you get a one point or a reversal. There you go, he got his one point. It is now six to five. Good match, close match. 
exciting match. So they're going to pummel a little bit, try to grab in. There's a shot by Orno, and it got him in. He got the two. Ref says two for Orno. He was under control. Now we'll see if Leighton can come back. You can see they're working the arms again. He might want to get that. And ideas to pin him. If not, get a tilt and get two or three points. Um, Leighton needs to get that arm back, slip it through if he can, make a space. There's a minute to go. Oh, very nice. He's got the head. He's got the arm back there. He flips him over. Very nice technique by Orno. Gabler is fighting like crazy. And uh, you can see in his face, he doesn't want to give up six, and he's going to do his best not to give up six. Bridging, arcing. We got 40 seconds to go, and the ref just called it. Up in for Orno. With 39 seconds left in the, in the second period. Which brings us to the 160 match. 160 is open for Kennedy, but we'll see if anybody made weight. Uh, my son Isaac Grams would have been there, but he busted his leg, and he is out for the year, and hopefully he'll get ready for Greco and freestyle for Min USA. And uh, by the way, that young man is going to wrestle for St. Cloud State Huskies, right now the number three ranked team in the nation for D2. Um, they, just having, they just had their qualifies for their national tournament last week, and they sent all but one. Um, some really good wrestlers out of there. Isaac's very proud. He worked hard in this community and school, supported him the whole, all the way. Uh, so that brings us to the uh, 170 match. We have Honor Melger for uh, Kennedy Wrestling. Nice young man. Remember him in the room two years ago as a freshman? We were very excited. You can see he's quick. He used to just run up and then get uh, hammered with a headlock or something. But uh, he is working on it. He has improved. He is crafty. But we still have work, as you see. Um, trying to cradle him up. He's got, uh, Orno's got two for it, and he cradled him, and he's stuck. I saw a lot of cradles this year. A lot of that's because we aren't in the room that much. We, Kennedy was out for four weeks because of COVID issues, two separate times, and I'm just glad and we're proud that we got back in the room and finishing the year before our sections next week. That'll bring us to the, at 182, Kennedy is open, and Orono is sending Sam Schmid. So I guess Honor wrestled 160, but uh, nonetheless, the score is 195. We are open. Orno gets six for that, so it is now 42 to 24 in favor of Orno Spartans. Which brings us up to the 195 weight pound, and we got Victor Cabrera Sr. out of Bloomington Kennedy here for the Golden Eagles. And he wrestled, oh yeah, I know this gentleman, uh, David Wilford. He's pretty good. Um, or no, it was, excuse me, Johnny Harstad, who's pretty good. Uh, David Wilford uh, took the forfeit. At 185, which brings us to heavyweight, and Kennedy is forfeiting. Orno will, will, I think. Oh no, oh, we got somebody here. Sometimes we don't know until we see who who presents what on the mat. We have odds and evens to start the match, and whatever, like the first round is number one, so that's an odd number. So whatever team is number one, which I do believe is. Or not, uh, would be Bloomington. So Bloomington. So we have to present first, and then the other team can choose who they want to wrestle against them. That's very important to learn for strategy. I've seen lots of mats. Uh, our head coach uh, Chuck Vavraski, local uh, Hall of Famer and over 400 victories and duels, and uh, past Olympic alternate back in the 70s. I've seen him win many duels. Uh, utilizing that tool. So it's very important, a whole strategy. Here we go, I think this is uh, Bellagio Bradley. And we might be going against Shaw. 
Shea Albright. Two for Shea, for uh, Orno. Puts him in a cradle pretty close. Oh, got him, he was just about ready to get out too. Quick six. As you can see, we have a young team. They're still getting the feel and learning, but at least it's all about mat time. It doesn't matter if they lose or win. The next couple of years, uh, we will be this way, and each year they'll get better and better, and hopefully in two or three years, we'll have the program rebuilt and go. And here's our heavyweight. So, uh, Bellagio Russell, 220 against uh, Johnny Har Harstad from uh, the Spartans. And then uh, I do believe Shea Albrecht took the uh, forfeit because Kennedy did not have a heavyweight. I know it went a little fast. Sorry, I got started a little bit. I'm uh, Tim Grams. I'm the co-president for the Kennedy Booster Wrestling Team Club. Uh, and uh, my wife, my lovely wife, Michelle Ann Hoffa Graham is the other co-president. And that is the end of this match. It was, I do believe, 55 to 24 or 56 24. They're moving in the score. So. All right, next up, I do believe, will be Orno versus the Polar North Polars with uh, alumni from Gaylord here, or excuse me, from uh, Kennedy. And we'll go to break.
Okay, welcome back. Uh, we now come to the second match of the evening between Bloomington Kennedy Golden Eagles and the Orono, or excuse me, not Bloomington Kennedy Eagles, sorry. Uh, we are against the Minneapolis North Polars versus the Orono Spartans. Uh, looks like the first, let me get it right here, the first three weights, 106, 13, and 120, will be forfeited to uh, Orono, so they'll be going up 18 and nothing so far. Uh, Isaiah Grady actually was scheduled to be varsity, but he did a JV match versus um, Kennedy Ivan Schiller. And I do believe Mr. Grady won in a decision. It was a good match. So that leaves us at 126. We got Matt Merritt versus, excuse me, Mason Pontkinen. Hold on. Make sure I get that right. Yep, that is correct. At one, yep. No, maybe that's not hey, right. It's hard to look at the programs here and who they actually sent out. But bear with me. But I know it is from Orono. Uh, from Orono, they must have brought up a J. Must have saved somebody for it. But as you can see, the Orono kid, is, wrestler, is uh, making trying to make quick work of the polar Minneapolis uh, North Polars wrestler. Um, Minneapolis North wrestler is doing a good job of bridging and trying to get up. He found a space, almost. Looks like he's going to thread through, and if he can turn his shoulder and go down, there he is. Build your base. Build your base. Don't get that arm up there. Orono Kid got uh, two takedown and three for uh, uh, near fall. Looks like he pinned him. Turn on the back and pinned him. 51 seconds left in the first period. The score will now be 18 to 12. I think I was wrong. Not sure on the score here, but uh, we'll move moving on. We got Craig Merritt, I do believe, versus Oh Matt Matt John it looks like. Leg back, leg back, hit down. Orono wrestler gets two for a takedown. Now he's going to work and try to work that arm and work for a tilt. You can see he's grabbed that arm. Now he's going to reach underneath, pull that leg out, put him down flat. He's still got control of that underneath arm for the Polar North wrestler. Puts it on the back. He plants it. Takes his elbow, pushes the head over, which puts him in a position to heave over and push with the chest. And there you are. We've got to watch the shoulder. And he'll lean on him, sit on him, and he gets the pin. Good technique. Matt Jondal, that was. So I do see the score now is. It is 30 to 6 for Orono. Orono gets a forfeit from North. Which that was at 160. Now we're at 170, which he got Taz Tilzer who's, uh, at Orono, which was open, and he wins for forfeit. Uh, North Polars, North has opening at 182. Sam Schmid will get the uh, win for Orono. We do have a match at 195. We got Dave Wilt Wilfert for Orono. Spartans, and we have got Antoine Bynum or Josh Collins for the Polars. Orno gets the takedown. He's going to work on top a little bit. Flips him over on the back. And now it's about leverage, sprawling out and controlling the balance, and lifting the head to get the two shoulder blades on the mat, which he did successfully, and he gets the six. So it brings the score, Orno 48, Eagle, or Polar 6. This will bring us to the... Johnny Harstead, know this young man, know his dad, very good kid, very good wrestling family. Jamari Robinson, for, J Jamari o Robinson for North in the blue. Should be a good match, we'll see. 
They're pummeling a little bit, trying to get some leverage. Oh, had half of the shot, try to throw. Heavier weights, you see him do a lot of standing routines. A lot of pummeling, a lot of arm movements. They don't like, a lot of weight coming down. Tripped him, Armstead got him tripped. And he's going for a pin. He settles in with the headlock, got control of the arm, trying to lift the head. Puller North. Rustler is doing a good job of bridging and he's trying to find a space to get back on his belly. Armstead is doing his adjustments. Oh, there you go, you can see the power of these bigger weights. And he rolled right into his own shoulder blades. That happens. Victor is Johnny Armstead. He is a senior this year and uh, wish him luck in the future endeavors. This brings us to heavyweight. This goes fast when you have some opening weights here. So we got Shea Albrecht for Orno. We got Kanye Bell for the North Polars. Been at the North Polars. Heavyweight. These are always the fun ones I like watching. It's a different style of wrestling. But uh, we'll see. A lot again, a lot of upper weight, a lot of body, bear hugs, a lot of leverage, trying to wear each other out. It's a lot of mass moving there, but a lot of strength and power. Get behind and sit. Both are doing the bear hugs. Now they're kind of busting that a little bit, trying to get it to a go around. Nope, he didn't let him. Albrecht did not run. Albrecht is a good heavyweight. Watched him many a years. There we go. Stepped out of bounds. Both up. Ruff will bring him to the center and they will restart. A uh, minute 25 left to go in the first period. We have uh, Orono Spartans up 54 to 6 over hey, hey, the mighty hey, North Pole. Hey, hey. There you go. You saw right there, Bear Hug into a trip to the North Wrestler, and then he just rolled through and got Harmstead. Harmstead's going out, and the ref called it potentially dangerous because he had the head. So he gets a point. You got to have an arm when you're in that position for a headlock. You want to get an arm. So he called it for a clasping point on the head. They will restart the match. It is now uh, North uh, the Polars uh, two to one in the match. First period, 44 seconds to go. That happens sometimes. You lose control of the arm, and or you don't. You're not aware of it, and your head, hand is or arm is around the head. And uh, if you squeeze on it, the right thing to do is call it. It's only a point. It is the right thing. You don't want the wrestlers to get hurt. Good, good. Go, go. Come this way. Here you go. Come you can way. see the bear hugs and the leverage to try to trip. Let's try to move. There's a nice, beautiful heavy, throw heavy. for the North wrestler. Armstead is trying to wrestle his way out of it, trying to turn. Oh, he's adjusting. He is adjusting. There it is. You can see it right there. There's a good shot. He needs the center and put his hips down. Armstead needs to keep pressing and keep rolling. Get that shoulder. There it is. Found a space, flipped over. So he gets two for a takedown and three for a near fall. It is now eight to one in favor of North. Armstead rolls his way through. He did a Gramby. And time expires. He should get two for a reversal. Let's see. I don't think he had enough time for any back points on that, the Orono wrestler, but you never know. The ref is discussing it with the head table, making sure everything is up. Uh, it is important to try to keep the score uh, correct because sometimes that's the only information the, the coaches have. So uh, in certain situations, depending on the score, there's certain moves or certain uh, uh, moves that you can get uh, maximum points for. So it helps the coaches decide on what the wrestler, and the wrestlers are watching too. Uh, if they see it's that close, they might have another move in the back of their mind that they want to try to get the two reversal, or uh, if they're close to a tilt to get the three instead of a two, they need three points to win. Uh, but we are going to go into the second period here. It looks like the score is being readjusted here for the match, this match. Um, oh, it is close now. It is. Polar North wrestler is up six to five. So any little thing here, if Harmstad gets up here, he can tie it. If he gets up and gets a one point escape, if he gets a reversal, he goes ahead. Very important items. Oh, we have a uh, false start. He wasn't quite set on top for the north. So he'll get a caution and a warning. Looks like he was listening to his 
somebody on the coach there, but that is that is normal. Just like to give a shout out to Malik Trumbo. He's a former graduate of the mighty uh, Bloomington Kennedy Golden Eagles. He wrestled, he was a great wrestler. He was fun and entertaining, upper weights, and uh, he is now head coach for the Minneapolis North Polars. You may have caught him on a few TV uh, segments on the news this year. They're very excited to have him. He's trying to get that program restarted and going. Match is restarted. There's a possible throw and down to the back. Two feet are still in bounds. And the Polar North just gave up the two takedown. And he is just laying on top, trying to figure out what to do. Now they both have to give effort or the ref could call stalling. But uh, when you're down at the edge of the mat, it's kind of kind of hard to get motivated sometimes. I always look at it the other way. When I was at the edge, then I get motivated. Because there's a lot of points that can be gained at the edge of the mat. So it is now that uh, Orno re retook it. Armstead, or excuse me, heavyweight just put him on the back, out of bounds. He got two for the near fall. His feet were in bounds, so that is a legit two. Held for more than two seconds. Would have been, uh, if it was three or four, or I think it was four or five seconds, he would have got the full three for the near fall. Uh, so the score is now 10 to six in favor of Orno. So you can see all these little points make a difference. We are in the second period with a minute to go. A lot of scoring could happen yet. Polar, uh, the Polar's wrestler could come back if he has a little bit of guts. Got to dig deep though. His heavyweight's pretty good. He's trying to get a cradle. He busted that up good. He's staying on four. Oh, he tried to flip over and get a leg through. It didn't happen. And Orno put him right to his back. And there's the fall. It's a lot of weight on there. <laughs> a lot of weight. But hey, it was a good match. He lost it in the second period. He was ahead, gave up the lead. And there you have it. Orno will win the uh, duel. I do believe 60 to 6. Again, I'm rookie here announcing the meets, but uh, it was fun. It goes fast when there's a lot of open weights due to COVID and other issues. I'm just glad we're wrestling. We're throwing something out there. Kids have an opportunity, parents have an opportunity. Um, just to let you know, we have sections coming up for the eight sections for each class. There is class 3A, class 2A, and class A. Kennedy is part of 2A, and I do believe North is 3A, although I haven't looked yet. They may have slipped down to two way for the year. Nonetheless, they are going to have sections. Uh, they are For teams, they're going to send four. Uh, I do believe the top two teams are going to a super regional. Not that super regional. Uh, four teams are going to go to state. Now, at the last round of super regional is going to be considered. It's at St. Michael Delverville, I do believe. Or, or <coughs> excuse me, at St. Michael or uh, St. Michael Elbertville, and I do believe the last round is going to be the first round of state. Uh, we are limited with people uh, in, in capacity. That's why they're trying to take care of it. At least they are in sections. At least we are having state. So you're going to send four teams out of that super regional to state. That's going to be for each <laughs> triple A, double A, and single A. And they'll have one day in the morning. I think they'll do the duels and one in the afternoon they do the individuals. They're going to do the same with uh, sections. <coughs> Top two in sections are going to go to a super regional. Uh, they will recognize the top 16 out of all the weights for all the sections, but only eight of those kids are going to go to the state, again, due to uh, time constraint and limitations. Um, but they will recognize the total of 16 per weight class for, all, for A, AAA, AA, but that <laughs> the final, the top eight, will be the ones to compete at this year's state tournament for individuals at St. Michael Overville. Uh, each class triple a double a and single a will have uh will have their own day at state and they only get one day so that's why they're kind of minimizing things so in the past it's always been top 16 wrestlers go and the top team out of each section so there's eight sections per class you, you get the point they have their there's you get at least two or three match uh dual meets at least two and then you go to the champ third place, fourth place match, and the championship match. Um, but hey, you know, considering where we're at six months ago to now, it's amazing to me that we can do this. Um, 
Every team, I'm sure, has been affected by COVID-19. I know Kennedy have been out for four weeks, out twice. Uh, we, we, this is like our seventh and eighth dual matches. We'll have more, uh, two more on uh, Saturday, and uh, that'll be it for the season. And we go into sections. Uh, they did extend the year. Usually we're at state tournament. So, or usually we're, at, we're getting ready for sections. So we did elongate the season by a week or two here. They usually take a week off for uh, strength, conditioning, healing, and uh, mind management, uh, psychology, and fine tuning of the athletes to get ready. And then we go on to sections. So <laughs> I do believe we will be with Totino Grace section this year. Orono's in that. Uh, Totino Grace, like Richfield's out. Uh, I do believe Fridley's in that section, so it will be a dogfight. Uh, Kennedy's going give it, to give it its try, but I think in that section, I think Tatino Grace will come out on top with a, a clash with Fridley. Yes, I am. All right. I uh, just had a visit here with Josh Holferty, and uh, we'll go from there. I think we can go to commercial break and get ready for the next duel.
All right, welcome back. We are here at the final meet of a tri duel here. We got the mighty Bloomington Kennedy Golden Eagles versus Minneapolis North Polars. Minneapolis North Polars coach is a former alumni from JFK, Malik Trumbo, upper weight, heavyweight, and I do believe 220. Uh, was a fun kid, and he has taken over North's program with another uh, assistant coach that I know over the years, and uh, they got the pullers going. Thin in numbers, but a lot of teams are. They're doing the toss here, or seeing who's home and who's away, or excuse me, odds and evens it'll be. Again, that is for strategy. The person with uh, who presents, that'll tell who presents their wrestler first on the mat. I got a good friend here, Mr. Scott Peterson. His son was alumni here. He's down at Briarcliff, doing well. He took fifth this year, I think, in the regionals. I'll let you say a little bit about him. Go ahead. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Thanks for having me tonight, Tim. Hey, you're very welcome. Good to see you. Should be a good match here. Yeah. Fun to see Malik running the program. That is right. Um, again, I do believe that North will have the first four openings here like they did last against Orono, but we'll see. Hope we get a couple matches tonight. We got uh, Maverick Beatty taking six for uh, Kennedy at 106, forfeit by the Polars. Max Carlson at 113 will get a forfeit from Polars. 120, Zach Greenhouse. We got a match. We got Zach, Zach Greenhouse, who was ranked early in the year, number 10 in state in 2A. I haven't checked it later, but we have Isaiah I Grady. Isaiah Grady. Zach has been wrestling well the last couple times I've seen him. Uh, he's been consistent. And you can see he got a takedown against him. He's going to do a switch, try to get out, kept with it, tried it again. Oh, reversed him there. He's approved, hasn't he? <laughs> he doesn't get some... nervous, he's calm, and he keeps wrestling. That's the big key. Keep moving. You got a couple back points there. Yep, you got three for that. Uh, the score is now Zach Greenhouse, five for Kennedy, and Isaiah is getting two. Isaiah is going to be a good wrestler as he keep, could rest, uh, keeps wrestling. He's got an older brother who's a senior this year, Jeremiah. Hopefully we'll see him at 132. These lighter weights, I always remember, a lot of energy. A lot of energy. A lot of energy, they're quick. But uh, tonight is uh, senior night and parent night. We have three seniors, like the record. One is my son, Isaac Grams. Then we got one of my friends, uh, my sons, own. Leighton Gabler, and uh, Victor Cabrera, who I've coached in football. There should be two. And uh, other sports throughout the years. Zach with a nice takedown there. Zach went to state last year. Isaac went to state last year. Uh, Mason Scott, who's not wrestling, he's sitting out for COVID for, I think, a couple more days. I think he starts wrestling on Saturday. He can wrestle again. So he's been through it. Uh, but, yeah, we're wrestling. Oh, we got a little false start. A little caution there on Zach. Yeah. We'll do some instructions here, which is great, all the refs. It's not only about ref and win and lose, it's about instructing these young athletes. Score is seven to three for Kennedy. They do need to show effort. Zach is trying to get the arm. He's been working on that. He wants to be able to get some tilts that'll help him. He has really fine tuned his technique on top. He used to be on top all the time, but you can see he did a step over, chicken wing. Good technique, found the opportunity. Oh, got a double arm bar in. And there's your pin. Nice, solid performance by Zach. Very, very, very good job. Both wrestlers. All right, so we got the score, Bloomington Kennedy 18, and the Polars have zero, and we will be at, uh, I do believe. 126. 126. Uh, let's see, we do have, I think this is Tony Zaho. Zaho will take a forfeit at 126 for Kennedy. Makes the score 24 to zero. At 132 for Kennedy, we have Dylan Ross. 
Jalen Robs at 132 for Kennedy. And he will take he will take a forfeit. That'll bring us to 138. I do believe Kennedy is going to settle Vince Vincent Gore. Uh, shield. Gore Shield. And North will forfeit there. That brings the score, I do believe, 36 to nothing. We're going to 145. It'll so probably Kennedy. Will Stavion Rendo for North. Looks or excuse like me, nice Stefan hit. Rendo. And he has a twin brother, Stavion. He'll wrestle the next weight up. And then we have got Alex Alvera for Kennedy. I may be a little gabby here. I'm not used to having a counterpart on you. <laughs> but uh, Scott knows when to step in. Nice move there. We got Gets two. two. Two for takedown. Yeah. Two for takedown. It's a good start. Now they'll work arms, put pressure down on those shoulders, keep them flat. The guy on the bottom wants to make sure he shows effort to get up on a try or get up and try to get an escape. Make a space, do a Gramby. Do a switch. Anyway, but you got to keep moving. Alex is doing a good job trying to control those arms on top. And now we have a stop the match. We have a wrestler that may have injured himself temporarily here. Might have asthma too. You never know. Very well, very good mat awareness by these refs. I've known uh, the one who's talking to the kids right now. He's ref, uh, I do believe, ref since 1962. He helped mentor me a little bit through the years. Great guy. Yes, he is. I think 24 years. He told me. Yeah. Nice double. Yep. Finish. There's two. Two points on a takedown again on the restart. He's got an arm. Working the arms again. Very important to keep both of them. You got to find a way to keep active. One wants to try to escape or get a reversal. And the top guy wants to keep progressing into a pin position if he can or get tilt points or near fall points, points, whatever. He's in a near fall situation now. Looks like he counted five seconds. So he should get another three if he doesn't count. Yeah, they will not award the points until the bottom wrestler gets out. If he doesn't, because you want to be able to give the six for the pin. A lot of fight in the North wrestling. There is. That, that puller did get, put up a good fight. But time wears the body down, and you see the result. Good match by both kids. 24 seconds of first period. Kennedy gets a fall. They are up now 42 to zero. So now we're going up to 152. Late Gaylor, Gabler Sr., one of the seniors that will be graduating soon for Kennedy and uh, Savion Rendo, Stefan, who just got pinned, uh, his brother. You can do play-by-play -play on this one. <laughs> yeah, you see a lot of arm, a lot of positioning. They want to do a setup, maybe get an arm drag. It's like Pollard had an opportunity, which he did. He's keeping on driving. Oh, Leighton got him over and threw him over onto his back. I like the North wrestlers. They're all attacking first. Yep, yep. They all go out and one mistake. He backed up when he tried to drive. He backed up to come in at him again. Leighton recognized it, got under hook in, and threw the arm. Yep. Very nice. Score is now 48 to 0 in favor of Kennedy. Again, North is a very young team, uh, new coaching system, kind of rebuilding. I uh, think last, last year they had two wrestlers. Yes, <laughs> they only had two wrestlers last year. So Big they did improvement. So that was uh, at 170, 160, Bloomington was open. Probably. Uh, I do believe North was too, so there's no score. Uh, at 170, uh, let me, Honor, that's right. Honor Melger took the forfeit for Kennedy. 182 is open on both. 195, we got Victor Cabrera for Kennedy. And Antoine Bynum, I do believe. 195. 
So we have the score now 54 to 0 in favor of Kennedy. But we do have a match at 195. Again, heavier weights, they usually uh, do a little less shooting, do a lot of upper arm pummeling and headlocks and bear hugs and trying to get them off tilter. It's a little bit out of bounds there. Uh, the senior names? Oh, this is Victor Cabrera, one of our seniors, uh, celebrating senior night. And we have got Here's a double. Antoine a Bynum for the Polar North. And Victor just tossed him onto his back. He's got his feet inside. Now he drug out. So he should get, uh, did not give offer him two. Okay. He must have saw one more foot out of bounds. We'll start the Polar North on the bottom. Victor's been on a, uh, was on a two-match streak until he met up with the Orono wrestler. Wrestled really well last night versus Benilde St. Margaret's. And so we got a class warning. New rule in the last couple of years. We got a class. You got to let go so you give the chance. Otherwise, you got to return him to the mat. I think you get like five seconds or something like that. It's a good rule. Keeps the keeps them keeps them focused and keeps them wrestling. So they'll restart. Uh, Polars will pick up one personal match point. So it's two to one. Good match. Still in the first period with a minute to go. Victor He's Cabrera got the wrist on underneath. Top. What's that? He's got his wrist underneath. Yeah. He's got it on the front. Not sure. What I think Victor tried to go to a call catcher. I know Isaac so. said he was trying to teach him. There's your reversal. For two. Now it is three to two in favor of the Polars. That's how quick these things can happen. Try something new, and if you if you're not your technique is smooth, you can fail. But that's okay. At least he tried something new. That's how you grow. Going for the half there. Boy, North is trying to work their arms. Yep. Good little battle. Victor's got to show something here. Nope, There's Randy. a Grammy roll. That's how Getting quick back that, point. That's how quick it can change. Oh. To your belly. Got a tee out. Otherwise he can be rolled. Victor's regaining control and he pins him. That was a good match. It was a good match by both of the kids. Oh, there's a team point right there. Yep. Very good. What's that? Can't lower your singlet while you're still Oh yeah, that, that'll be a team point. It's unsportsmanship con like conduct. You can't lower your singlet until you get off the mat. Back in high school in my days, back in the 80s, that cost us a state tournament bid. We were tied. Our heavyweight took one, one step before he went off, lowered his singlet, got caught for it. We lost in criteria because of that penalty point. Tough. Watertown, I do believe, went to state. We did not. Tough way to go out. That happened to us in BAA wrestling, too. It did. Yep. And uh, what's funny about gear. that, my son was on the team, and uh, the uh, one of another kid, if I remember, uh, Olson, uh, he was from Gaylord, or, or Winthrop on our team also. He was part of that team uh, that did go to state, and his son was the one that lowered the singlet. Talk about deja vu, but uh -oh. good memories. Nice throw there. Two points for Polars. Yep, we have got J Jamario Robinson, I do believe, for Polars, and let's see, looks like we have Bellagio Bradley for Kennedy. Hopefully the Polar's heavyweight gets a match. He, was, yep. he looked pretty exciting in the Oro yep. match. Lodge is a fairly new wrestler, but he goes out there. He's excited every time. It doesn't matter. He just wants to wrestle and get better. Again, you can see upper upper weights. You get a lot more arm throws, kind of like Greco moves. And uh, lower weights, you get a lot of takedowns, quickness shots. There's a shot by the big guy. Nice. He's sprawl, trying to sprawl. Good defense. Uh -oh. And, oh. Well, got, all about, got him on the roll. Through. All about balance, isn't it, sometimes? Oh. Yep, his shoulder was down. There you go. Exciting the heavy, match. Lot the heavyweight for the Polars here. I think he's coming in 17-3 and three this year. Oh, my gosh, really? That is cool. They got, yeah, North has been wrestling a lot. I see him a lot in the guillotine on the results. Yeah, so they've been got him fired up. Yep, healthy. 
So Conway from North will take the forfeit. We don't have a heavyweight. That concludes the meet tonight. And uh, what we'll do next is we're going to do a little program and honor the three seniors from the uh, Bloomington Kennedy Wrestling Program. Again, it'll be Victor Cabrera. He wrestled at 192. Um, my son Isaac, who is out with a broken leg, his year is done. He usually wrestled, he would be wrestling 160 now, but he wrestled 190 most of the year. He's getting down to 160 to possibly go to state. And then we have uh, Leighton Gabler, good friends of Bobby and uh, John Gabler. He wrestled at 154. Looks like the final score was 59 to 12 for the Eagles. 59 to 12. Yep. We will do the uh, senior stuff next. Josh Colferty, our assist assistant coach, will uh, do some presenting and do a little bit for each of the kids. And we have uh, our head coach who's recovering. Uh, he's made it here today, and he'll sit and uh, pat him on the back. Chuck Favorosky and Josh Holferty. Perfect.
All right. Hopefully I'm not getting a reverb from you, but we got Josh Holford, assistant coach for the Golden Eagles, uh, Kennedy. It's senior night and parent night. We'll be announcing the three seniors and their parents will come up. Uh, I'm one of the parents, so we'll be trying to get around there with my cord as I'm doing the announcing. And uh, these kids have been in the program for my son for over 12 years, Victor for over six, Leighton for last four. First senior, Victor Cabrera. Started in seventh grade, I recruited him in middle school. He was tough. He, had, he was, uh, his mom is uh, Maria Gonzalez and Israel Cuervos. Yep. He has, he was a very good, he was always competitor with our heavier weight down there. Whenever one won, the other guy had to win. And whenever they lost, the other kid made sure he won. Just to rub it in. Good kid, big heart. We'll be missing him. Next, we got Leighton Gabler, senior. Parents are John and Bobby Gabler. Very good friends of mine. Uh, when I first met him, just, just instant karma. He came out as a ninth grader. Dad, his dad said, should have been in kindergarten. <laughs> But uh, he's come a long ways. We will miss him. I wish we had two more years with him. Great kid, great personality. He was one of the captains on the Kennedy football team this year. Um, did a great job. Last is my son, Isaac Graham. Started in first grade. My wife, Michelle, and myself, Tim. Oh, I can't. I'll have to, I'll be back in a bit. about that. Uh, just giving some background. Isaac will be going to a St. Cloud State D2 program. Won the national championship the last couple of years. Uh, my wife and uh, myself are co-president of the Kennedy Booster Club for the high school. And I'm also active with BAA and the middle school when we had it. We're going to fight like heck to get that back. Well, thank you for attending tonight. Again, on behalf of Kennedy, Bloomington Kennedy and BTTV um, and all the seniors and parents, let's keep wrestling going. Um, learn about it. Give it a shot. You will not regret it. A lot of life lessons, a lot of experiences, and it really comes down to family. And if there's a time that a nation, a country, or this world needs wrestling with the discipline and everything else involved, it's now. Let's keep it going. Until the next time we meet, we'll see you on the map. <laughs>